Hello, this is Hal Richardson with A Layman Looks at the Word. We're continuing with our study of the Gospel in the Stars. We are in the 11th house, Cancer, the Crab, or the Finished Redeemer's Work. In Egyptian, it is the resting place. In Syriac, it is the one who holds. The noetic word of Khan is the traveler's resting place. And Sir is embraced or encircled. So as the Romans used it, Can and Sir, or Cancer, is the traveler's resting place for the embraced. Just as a crab will hold its prey tight in its pinchers, Jesus holds his church tight in his everlasting arms. In John 10, 28, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Principal stars or tegamine, which means the hiding place or the shelter. Jesus keeps us, protects us, and gives us rest. Also, el hamarine, which means the lambs assembled. Also, there's prosepi, which is known as the beehive, which means the multitude of innumerable seed. We see here Jesus taking his church, the innumerable seed, holding them all together so that no man can take them away from him and no demon or the devil himself. They're safe in the arms of Jesus. Here's the way cancer looks on Bollinger's sky chart the one that we're referring to. The first decan of cancer is Ursa Minor. Anciently, it was a lesser sheepfold. You can see here the bear pictured, but the tail is really long. There were no bears in the ancient planispheres or zodiacs of the Chaldeans, the Persians, the Egyptians, or the Indians. So it's been transformed to the lesser bear, as with Ursa Major, the greater bear. It is one of the 48 constellations listed in Ptolemy's zodiac signs listed in the second century AD. Principal stars here that prove that this is the lesser sheepfold originally is Kochab, which means waiting on him who comes. Afurkadain, which means the redeemed assembly. So we see that it is the lesser sheepfold and Ursa Major, when we get to it, is the greater sheepfold. I believe the lesser sheepfold here is the first church that was taken to heaven by Jesus and Matthew when he rose from the dead and the graves were opened and they went with him. The pole star is the last star in the handle which is called Polaris, the handle of the little dipper, and it is also our north star and doesn't ever change. The rest of the universe around it and our galaxy rotates around the pole star as you can see here. And here's the way Bullinger shows on his star chart from the mid 1800s of Ursa Minor, the lesser sheepfold. Next we have Ursa Major which is the greater sheepfold. 
the seven stars that we're all familiar with, we also call the Big Dipper. Through time, it has changed to be the greater bear from the greater sheepfold. If you take the two stars on the pouring out side of the Dipper and go their length by times, it goes directly to the North Star, an easy way to find it. These stars are Merak and Duby that you see here. The example of five times the distance between the two goes directly to the North Star. Principal stars are Duby, which means the herd or the flock, or the resting place. Merak, which means the purchase flocked, and we were purchased with the blood of Jesus. Calistio, which means ship, sheepfold. Facta, which means visited, guarded, and numbered. Jesus came to earth and bought us with his life, and guards us with his angels, and numbers us to be his own. Here's the way that Ursa Major looks on Bollinger's sky chart that we use the greater sheepfold. I believe that this is the church from the last 2,000 years that will be raptured together to meet with the lesser sheepfold in heaven one day. Here we see our two dippers, the lesser and the greater sheepfold, and the constellations around them in the north, Cephas, Cassiopeia, Draco, Draco the dragon was introduced to us in Sagittarius, a deacon from that house. But he is the dragon, the devil, and you can see how he intertwines around the sheepfold, the greater and the lesser sheepfold, Satan trying to get to us. Here's the area of the dippers and Draco with just the stars and not any lines or images beautiful heavens our Lord has made. Here we see in Stellarium how Draco intertwines but how Hercules is stomping on the head of the dragon. Hercules the Mighty One was introduced to us back in Scorpio and he had his foot on the head of the dragon which is the pro Evangelicum again that Christ would bruise the head of the serpent. Hercules, as we have learned, is a representative of Jesus Christ, and Christ is protecting us from the dragon. In Greek mythology, Hercules is known to kill two dragons. One was a multi-headed dragon as shown in this sculpture here by Gambaloni in the 1600s. Then there was another dragon that was guarding the golden apples in a garden that Hercules had to kill for Atlas to get the golden apples. In these images we see that Jesus protects us from the dragon and defeats the dragon, which is Satan, by stomping him in the head. Jesus defeated Satan at the cross. We read about in Colossians 2 that he made a show of them openly. And then we read again where Jesus has the keys in Revelation 1 of death and Hades, those that he took from Satan and so in him, he has defeated Satan and will once again, in Revelation 20, defeat him permanently when he's thrown into the lake of fire. The last decan in Cancer is Argo, the ship. 
and it's the ship bringing the pilgrims home safe in harbor. It is a large constellation and so it is divided into Pupus and Pyxis, Vela and Carina. The constellation Argo is so large it can't all be seen from the northern hemisphere. I'm in southern Arizona and I can only see about half of it. But down around mid-Mexico, it would probably look like this. And you would see, you could still see Crux and you could see the whole constellation. Principal stars are Canopus, the possession of him who comes, Canopus is the brightest star in the southern hemisphere. And Safina, which means the multitude. And Teres, which means the possession. All of these are talking about Jesus bringing all of his church home safely and into harbor. He promised us that I go to prepare a place for you and if I go, I will come again and take you with me that you can be where I am. In Greek mythology, it tells of Jason and the Argonauts who sailed on the ship Argo to find the Golden Fleece. The truth based in this story or revealed in this story is Christ is the captain, Argo's the ship which is an arc of safety that represents the church. Nave is Latin for the ship, and the open space in churches is also called a nave, and that's where the word navy comes from. And Jesus is also the victim here who was killed and hung on a tree with a serpent guarding his golden fleece. But Jason, a representative of Christ, is able to kill the serpent and recover the golden fleece and restore righteousness to man. And this was done by our Lord, who was raised from the dead by God and gives us his righteousness and eternal life. He will come for us similar to the Ark of Noah and deliver us from a world who has turned from God and relishes on evil. If we are on the ark of God, we are saved even when we fall down. We are still on the ark, the safe harbor that the ship goes to is heaven. This is Hal Richardson. Join me next time and we'll conclude the Gospel in the Stars when we finish with Leo, the next house. Bye for now.